Well, here I am, as you can see, on the fourth floor of the Port of Liverpool building, uh, which is a beautiful 1907 construction rendered in Portland stone on the facade. A magnificent cupola inside, which is in the style of Edwardian Baroque. Do come and have a look at what essentially is, I suppose, a cathedral to commerce in a certain sense. Um, uh, whilst I'm here, I want to talk to you about a common intention constructive trust case, an early 1970s authority from the Court of Appeal, and in particular uh, on the panel was our, our famous friend, uh, the Lord Denning, who was, of course, master of the roles at the time. So the case is Cook and Head. And the citation is 1972, square brackets, one weekly law reports, at page 518. So it's, it's one of our first instances in terms of a judgment from the Court of Appeal of the new model constructive trust. Helps us think and contextualize other cases around that period like Gissing and Gissing and also Eves and Eves uh, and what was going on in terms of the development of the constructive trust. It's a sole legal owner case and the sole legal owner in this instance was Dennis Head. The non-legal owner, the potential claimant uh, of a beneficial interest pursuant to an equitable claim, was Jacqueline Cook, his mistress. So the facts are they bought some land. Uh, that land went into the name of, uh, of Dennis Head. Uh, and then uh, a bungalow was built on that land. Dennis did a substantial amount of work, but so did Jacqueline. And you'll forgive me for pausing on my perambulation around the cupola at this stage, because I need to read out what she did, because there's a substantial amount of activity in relation to Tum Tumwamba, which was the property, which included using a sledgehammer to demolish some old buildings. She fill filled the wheelbarrow with rubble and hard core and wheeled it up to the bank. She worked the cement mixer, which was out of order and difficult to work. She did painting and so forth. The plaintiff did much more than most women would do, according to Lord Denning. What does that mean? Well, don't judge law or history backwards. Think about 1972. Think about social conventions at the time. And maybe that was a lot of work for a, for a lady, or perhaps not. But just mull on that point, contextually. However... Uh, first instance, Mr Justice Plowden took a different view when he heard the evidence of, uh, of Dennis because Dennis adduced the idea that all she did was stand around the building site stroking a blue cat. Hence why we call this case the blue cat case. Much like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle called one of his famous mysteries the blue carbuncle. Um, but we'll resolve the mystery of this case now when I tell you the ratio or in essence what occurred. So. They're the facts. They split up, as perhaps you'll have already guessed, uh, do Jacqueline and Dennis. So Dennis is to sell the property. Jacqueline hears of this and, of course, wants her efforts reflected. The idea that she's acted to her detriment reflected in a beneficial interest in the property. Because, of course, he's the sole legal owner and she but for the intervention of equity, wouldn't be able to obtain any form of interest. So she asserts that that effort caused her, or there was an implicit agreement with them, that she was able, or is able, to found an interest in that property pursuant to uh, a common intention constructive trust. That her acting to her detriment was sufficient to be able to found that interest. So think about Cook and Head, think about how it sits with Eves and Eves, and think about how it also sits with later cases that we'll get into, like Lloyds Bank on Rosset, Stack and Dowden, Jones and Kerno, and other authorities. My lift is here, so I'll now take it down to the ground floor and bid you goodbye. Au revoir.